As usual, we're going to start by covering different materials, just showing hatching and cross hatching. This is a um, Faber Castell, Faber Castell. Sorry if I'm brutalizing it, but F A B E R Castell. Um, and I'm showing you the different sizes that they have. I'm sure there are others, but this is what I had. There's also a larger B than I have shown here that I will show you later in the video. The next measurements are for micron pins. If I mispronounce that, I'm sorry, that's what I've always heard. M-I-C-R-O-N. And their numbering is different. Obviously, they don't, they don't use letters. Um, I'm not sure if they have a brush pen. They might. These are, again, just the pens I had on hand and thought they were enough to give you a good introduction to the different measurements for the different brands. When you're working with these kind of pens, when you have the pen totally upright, you're going to get the cleanest, most black line. If you have it to the side, sometimes it may be uneven. Also, be careful with the smaller nib, like the 05, because if you put too much pressure, you might bend it. If you want to continue with pen, both brands offer different colors. Here's an example of red, because again, that's what I had. Also, I wanted to show you the difference between the archival artist pens and Sharpies. Here, you can't really tell a difference, but this is the big brush pen I was telling you about. But with these, the bigger deposits of ink, you can really tell a difference. Sharpie tends to be a little bit more purple, and the artist pens tend to be a little bit more black. But you can see on this next slide where I have scribbled a background with the artist pen. Now I'm going to show you the jelly roll pen. You really need to wait so the ink is dry before you use it. And then the slower you go, the easier it's going to deposit a more white line. And you can even go back on top of it, just wait till that dries. If you don't wait until they're dry, you could either scrape up the previous white ink or mix with the black ink and get a gray. So I show you this in response to the jelly roll. This is actually scratch board, and you can see um, the darker lines above my left hand are where I've, I've like transferred a drawing. And here it's almost like a reductive drawing. You're drawing with the white lines by scraping the ink off to show the porcelain underneath. So let me know if you're interested in learning more about this. I can definitely show you, because um, it's very similar to pen, just drawing in reverse. So that was a very brief and quick introduction to the materials. This is a way to build value. So negative space, the closer your lines are together, the darker they're going to be. Layering, that's cross-hatching. Uh, cross um, and you can do a bunch of di different directions. It doesn't have to be like one, two, three. You just basically fill up the space with parallel lines. And line weight is basically just switching different pins to get a thicker line. Here I've done some very quick thumbnails of different kinds of line work that you can use to build value with a pen drawing. There are so many more. Um, and you can really get creative with it, like for one drawing, I built value with different words. So really, there's infinite options for whatever you want to do that conceptually benefits your drawing. But here are just a, bit, a few to get you, you know, like thinking about how value is built. Next, I'm going to show you an eight-step value scale for different pen techniques. I'm going to do hatching and cross-hatching, stippling, and dynamic lines. First, I'm just going to start by making my grid. Each one is a 1 by 8, so that I have 8 1-inch squares for each of my value steps. First, I'm going to start with hatching and cross-hatching. So this last square is going to be my totally black square, and I'm, I'm going to fill it in, but then I'm going to go on top of it and cross hatch on top of it so that you can see the texture because whatever you draw in pen you're going to see reflected. So you can see the vertical and horizontal lines that I just filled in. Next I'm going to go to my, my first square which is going to be my lightest. You could if you wanted to leave this one totally blank. I chose not to because I wanted to show the different steps of the hatching and cross hatching but that's up to your discretion. If you want to start with a blank one that's totally fine. So initially I'm just layering different numbers of lines, but as I keep going I'm going to keep adding different angles and the lines are also going to get closer together. You could do one or the other, but I like to use both because they really do add more value. You can also notice that right now I'm using an F pen and previously I was using an S. That's also going to add value because the lines themselves are thicker. So I personally decided to kind of go back and forth from the beginning and to the end so they could kind of meet in the middle. and equally step toward each other but again that's kind of up to how you want to work I just knew that I wanted the beginning ones to kind of step forward and I knew the last one was going to be black and so I knew the next to last one or the penultimate one would be really close to black and then I would kind of fill in the two in between 
Here I'm just kind of going over the, the last final black uh, square again because I kind of wanted to show the smaller lines because when I had started I was only using the big brush pen and now going back on top of it you can see the lines because the pen is going to be a little bit reflective and I kind of wanted it to match the rest of the line work that I had been doing. So here I'm going back in between lines, so I'm making the negative space smaller, and again that's making everything darker. And now that I finished that one, I realized that they were way too close in value to each other, so I darkened the one next to it, and then I darkened the second to last one because I really do want them spaced out more evenly. And then this last little line, I just didn't like how they were all crosshatched except for the first one, so I added it. I sped the stippling one up a lot because, you know, I feel like I kind of addressed what I'm going to be doing in the other two in the first example. Um, but yeah, so stippling, I'm just using dots. Again, I went over the black square and put the dot texture on top. You can fill it up with dots manually, but it's going to take a long time. So I just went ahead and filled it in and then just put the texture on top and I feel like you get a really similar effect. Also, again, in this one, like in the previous one, I am changing my pencils, but keep in mind that when you use a brush pencil, you're not going to get circular dots. You're going to kind of get like almost a teardrop shape because the brush is pointy and then thicker at the, in the middle and at the top. So you're going to kind of get the brush stroke almost, um, which is fine if you're okay with that, but just make sure you're aware that it's not going to be a dot like the other pens. And again, here I'm going in and doing my final touches to make sure that they're the appropriate steps apart so that none of them are too similar to each other. You can also notice that they are different steps from the first one. That's totally fine because, you know, I mean, pen is permanent. You can't go back and fix it unless you used a white gel pen or something. So, I mean, if your steps are slightly different for the different scales, that's totally fine. You know, just as long as they are definitely different from the one before it and the one after it. For the example with the dynamic lines, I kind of use swirlies in this example. If I was doing them in a drawing, I would maybe use swirlies, but I think I would use less loopy lines and maybe more um, like angular, sporadic, energized lines. Both of them are fine, but it really just kind of depends on the effect you're going for. I used this because it was easier to contain within the box to have kind of deliberate loops. But if I really wanted a drawing full of energy, I would probably use the sporadic, short, you know, mix of round and straight lines. I also want to point out, if at any point I said pencil, every single time I meant pen, so I apologize. 